Whenever we make decisions about what to do and how to do it, we take into account internal estimates of the likely outcomes of our choices. We use what we learned from past experience to shape our future behavior. I'm Misha Ahrens. And I'm Takashi Kawashima. We are at HHMI's Generia Research Campus. And we'd like to tell you about our work on how animals learn from their experiences. How does this work at the neural level? How do circuits register the outcomes of actions, turn these into memories, and how do these memories influence future behavior? We studied this question in the simple case of swimming in larval zebrafish. One of the most basic and important things these animals can do is to swim. The effect of a swim action is the movement of the animal's body through the environment. So a successful swim bout is one that effectively drives the location of the fish to where the fish wants to go. This behavior can be used to study learning. When the fish sees that it moves excessively far during a swim bout, it will adapt by reducing the power of the next swim bout. When we repeatedly perturb this relationship between swim bouts and the distance moved, the fish will build up a memory so that even after a pause in swimming, their behavior is still affected by its past experience. To find out how this memory is established, we placed the fish in a virtual arena and made it do a simple swim motor learning task. We imaged its brain activity in the hope of finding neurons whose activity encoded the memory of how effective swim bouts are at driving the fish forward. We found such neurons in a place we didn't expect, the dorsal raphe nucleus. This nucleus is a major serotonergic center in the vertebrate brain. Since it is often associated with emotive processes, it was surprising to us that this neuromodulatory center is directly involved in this short-term motor learning. What happens in the raphe during the learning process? First, when the fish moves forward through the environment, visual motion activates neurons in the raphe. This activation conveys how fast the environment moved during swimming. Second, when we repeatedly train the fish with excessive environmental motion, activity will build up in the raphe and persist for about 20 seconds. Like this, the fish uses the outcomes of swim actions to build up a neural representation of how effective the brain is at driving the fish forward. Finally, we showed that raphe activity suppresses swim power. In this way, the fish maintains its adaptation. When it's too easy for the brain to move the fish, swim commands will weaken for extended periods of time. In motor learning, sensory input during actions needs to be taken into account, but sensory input decoupled from actions is mostly unimportant for learning. We asked whether serotonergic raffin neurons simply encode the visual stimulus or whether motor output is also important for their responses. We imaged the raffe while the animal viewed a visual scene that sometimes moved with swimming, as before, sometimes it moved on its own, and sometimes it remained static even when the fish swam. Serotonergic neurons in the raffe respond to visual motion during swimming. When the visual motion occurs without swimming, or when the fish swims without visual feedback, responses are much smaller. In this way, these neurons respond to the effects of the fish's own actions, but not the exogenous motion, as if they are selecting for information useful for motor learning. Other cell types, such as GABAergic neurons, show different response patterns. These experiments were done by whole brain imaging using light sheet microscopy in behaving larval zebrafish. We combined these with targeted silencing and activation of serotonergic neurons to show that this neuromodulatory system mediates this type of memory. To summarize, the dorsal raphe nucleus encodes the outcomes of actions, builds up a memory of how effective swim actions are at driving the fish forward through its environment, and modulates future behavior. In this way, the fish adapts for prolonged periods of time to bodily and environmental changes that make it easier or harder for the brain to move the fish. This establishes a link between this form of motor learning and neuromodulation, and assigns a specific role to the serotonergic system that may also inform us about its wider functions. Zebrafish and mammals share a common evolutionary origin. We can speculate about whether the human dorsal raphe nucleus also contains representations of the effectiveness of certain aspects of our actions.